I grew up with a rotary phone on the wall, and you never had to update it. But this thing, yeah, you do have to keep the software on your iPhone up to date. Hi, my name is Rich, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Many of you that watch this channel know that I road test stuff before I recommend it. You know, even if it takes me a little while to do so. Well, iOS 17 is out. What is iOS 17? It's the latest software for your iPhone. In fact, it's been out for about a month. So should you install this update? Yeah, yeah, you should. And let me tell you why. Every year, Apple releases a major update to the iPhone software and you don't have to install it, but you probably should. You know, falling too far behind on updating your phone just creates a batch of problems you don't wanna to have to mess with. And while updating itself can create a problem or two, they're usually ironed out by Apple in short order. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to update it. It's easy. It's not hard. And then I'm going to show you a handful of features that are new to iOS 17 that I just love. And by the way, there's a bunch of new features and I got a batch of new videos coming soon that'll cover a lot of them. But for today, I'm just picking a few that I actually use and find interesting. This is a short video, but worth watching. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is just how to update. So you go into settings right here and you go to general and then you tap on software update. And as you can see, this says iOS 17.0.3, your iOS is up to date. So I've downloaded the latest updates, but if you have not downloaded the latest updates, you'll have a button here that you can tap that will allow you to update to the latest operating system. And it's really that simple. So take a look at that first to make sure you don't have iOS 17 already installed. If you'll notice, I have automatic updates turned on. So whenever something new comes out, usually in the evening, it'll just download and install the update for me and I don't even have to mess with it. But if you don't have that turned on, you do need to manually update it. So just keep that in mind. All right, the star of the show for most people is something called standby mode. And if you have an iPhone Pro that's got the always on display, which would be an iPhone Pro 14 or this version here, the newest phone, the iPhone 15, if you have one of those two Pro models, then you have always on display. And if you connect it to a power source here, I'm just gonna connect it to my little stand that's got a MagSafe charger on it, and you turn it sideways, that's what you get. You get a clock and you get another widget over here so you can change the clock, how it looks by just scrolling around. You can get the date. You can also change some things over here. You can get a calendar. You can get reminders up. And also, if you swipe, you can also get some pictures on here. I can't because it's wanting to see my face. There we go. You can swipe through and it'll go through some pictures for you. You can also just get one big clock if you want something like that. And at night, this goes down to a very dark red. You can see it in the dark, but it's not so bright that it disturbs you. And this just can sit beside your bed and be a night clock. Now, one of the things I found is that sometimes it just goes off in the middle of the night and I'm laying there on my pillow and I open my eyes and there's nothing there. The phone is just dark. If I move my hand or make some motion in front of it, it will come back on. I'm not a big fan of doing that because when I'm laying in bed and I just open my eyes to see what time it is, I don't want to have to wave at my iPhone. But there's some people who've solve that problem and it works for them. So maybe if this is a, a bug or something like that, Apple will look into it. Now, ultimately, for it to work as a night clock, for me, it needs to stay on all night. Um, but that is standby mode, and that is just really a cool little feature. By the way, I use this um, on my desk during the daytime, and I'm always moving around enough in front of it that it just stays on all the time, and I can see you know, my list of things to do uh, if I've got any reminders for the day, and it's just a quick glance, 
and I can see some important information. So it's a really cool little feature. It's been all over the internet and people love standby mode and I do too. And I think you will too once you update to uh, iOS 17, assuming you have a pro model. You can actually get standby mode on your other phones if you don't have always on, but the problem with that is it only stays on for about a minute and then it goes back off. So you really need an always on display with an iPhone 14 or 15, iPhone Pro 14 or 15. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is sharing your contact information. So if you're at a restaurant and you run into a friend and you want to share your information, in the past I would typically ask for their phone number and I would text my phone number over to them and then they'd have it or something like that. But if they have an iPhone, then this is an easy way um, to just share. And all you have to do is tap the two iPhones together. And it works like this. If I go into Contacts and I pull open my contact right there and I just turn these like this, you can see that it will share the contact from one phone to the other and you can click share and share and now both of them have been shared and you've got contact information from each person on each phone just a handy little thing to do okay if you've watched my channel at all you know I like to keep a clean home screen and I'm always moving widgets around so you know if I were to take say this widget here and I move it there and then I don't like it I wish I hadn't moved the widget there you can now just shake your iPhone like that and it'll do undo move and you can just click on undo and your app goes back to where it was before if you move a bunch of apps around and you're like, mm, I don't think that's the way I wanted it to be done, just shake your phone, tap undo, and you're good to go. Just a neat little feature in iOS 17. So the iPhones have had the portrait mode um, for a couple of generations, but there's something new in iOS 17, and that's the ability to take any picture that's got a person or a pet or something like that in it and turn it into portrait mode. What is portrait mode? That's where you're in focus and the things behind you are kind of blurry so that you stand out. That blurriness is called bokeh, and here's how you do that. I'm going to show you a picture that I took of Scout, my dog, and if you notice, the background is kind of blurry, and, but it wasn't that way when I took the picture. If I go into edit, here I can set, if you'll notice there's a little square, I don't know if you can see that, that's over Scout's face. And I can change this and if you'll notice you can see the background is now in focus. He's in focus too, but if I do this, now the background is out of focus. And if I click done, it takes a minute to do it, and then I tap on it and I zoom in, now you can see that Scout is all in focus and the background is not in focus and there's just some beautiful bokeh back there and it's just a neat little feature in iOS 17 where you can sort of make your pictures look professional. And it's not hard to do either. I get junk calls all the time uh, on my iPhone. It just drives me nuts. But there's a way when a call comes in that you can report it as junk. You used to could do it by a variety of different ways, but if you go to Recents, and let's say I'm going to go right here, we'll say my call is a junk call, you can just slide over and tap on this, and you can report it as junk. And once you report it as junk, if that number is used again to call you, it won't go through. Man, that's going to be a really handy feature for those who want to take the time to go through and to clear up all of their junk calls that come in. All right, the last thing I want to show you is how to add an appointment from Spotlight Search. This is kind of different, but I think it's going to be useful. At least it's going to be useful for me. So normally, if you go into your calendar, if you wanted to make an appointment, you'd go into your calendar, you'd tap on a time, um, you'd hit the plus and tap on a time, and then you'd enter all the data in for your calendar. 
appointment. But this is a way you can do it just quickly. And here's how you do it. You just tap on search. I'm going to use the microphone to dictate. Schedule a doctor's appointment for 2 p.m. this Friday. Click Add. And I'm just going to clean up the language there. Like that. Click Add. And now you're done. And if you go back to your calendar, you'll see on Friday, doctor's appointment at 2 p.m. Just like that. And it's just a quick way to tap on search, use your voice, enter the appointment, and it's in your calendar just like that. Such a handy little feature. And it's only available in iOS 17. Look, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many new features in iOS 17. It would take hours to cover them all. I just wanted to give you a taste as a way to entice you to update your phone. If you do, you won't regret it. All right, that's it for today. I hope you found this short tutorial helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.